we're talking about African women. You see? A lot of us sat there and listened to TV and thought they were talking about Tawana. They were not talking about Tawana. And the reason why we stood up in the first place because black men must stand up for their women. get away with rape. That's what the bottom line is. We're not through with the struggle yet. But you see, the one thing that white folks have found out in New York, they're not dealing with little boys when they deal with us. And we're not going to bend, buckle, or bow, and we're not going to apologize for nothing. And the, the bottom line that we must always have is that we must look for fights. You know, everybody want to stay away from fight. When I wake up every morning, I'm looking for a fight. I'm looking for a fight. I want to get it on every day of the week. And if you are a real man, that's the way that you feel. When you go home, you want to be the kindest man in the world to your wife because you have fought all of your battles out in the street. See, we got a lot of Negro men who want to show that they are men when they get home. You understand what they are punks in the streets. And that's what we got to turn around. So I feel good every day of the week. Every time these white folks throw something on me, I'd be very pleased. Because I'm the one person who can take it. I can take everything that they throw down. So if we don't understand anything else, let us understand that tension is good. Struggle is excellent. And war is fine. Thank you very much. Right. If you have a question, please come down so you just walk forward. Uh, and if you decide that you're going to change the rules and make a comment, do it in 30 seconds because the whole idea is that this is a chance to have some communication, not to have people just talk. So if you have any questions, please come down. I believe that coming from Afrocentric consciousness, that we did not participate in before with some questions. The audience are the one that have the true answers. We have the guidance of these heroes of them tonight, but the true matches are the people in the audience that have the answers. And I would like to paraphrase my good friend, my colleague, Dr. Maliki Asante. Dr. Asante said, only a self-choosing people is able to reach the maturity of Afrocentric countries and emancipation. I would like to ask Dr. Champ or anyone else that may have come to Would you agree that in our institution, we must set up renaming ceremony so that we no longer define ourselves out of position and we may trade by language colonization, question of identity crisis? I'm going to make a brief statement, Mohammed, and that is, in my, in my presentation, I, I said we have to define, defend, and develop. As a part of definition, we have to look at all of those institutions in our community that we want to hold on to, and there are some that we might want to let go of. And I think that it's important that we start that process with the young folks. They're a group of sisters and brothers in Brooklyn, for example, that, that take their children through rites of passage, that, that start just as they do in the African tradition to work with young people at late ages 11 and 12, and, and at a certain age, proclaim them having arrived. And I think that we have to begin to look at you know, all of the institutions. Um, we, for example, at Medgar Evers celebrate Kwanzaa every year here. Right. And I think it's important for us to use that as an example of redefinition. On November 18th, every one of you should receive a flyer. We plan to take people out to the Atlantic Ocean to pay tribute to those 100 million people in the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, a sister by the name of Tony K. Barbara said, you know where the people, we don't have a plaque, we don't have a day, we don't have an hour, we don't have any memorial that says that those people existed, that they dared to jump ship and navigate with the sharks as opposed to with the captains of those ships. And she said, we're going to keep going in circles until we recognize them. You ask any one of our young people, how many Jews died in the Holocaust? They 
tell you six million, because Jewish people make sure we know that. And of course, they should make sure. We must make sure that our young people know that there was a thing called the Middle Passage. And I hope everybody in this audience will come out on November 18th to participate in that ceremony because it has some significance. So in answer to your question, yes, we must redefine. And only through that redefinition will we be able to move forward as a people. If we continue to do it Nasser's way, Mohammed, we will continue to remain slaves. Right. Channel on that, and one of the things a lot of people think that all we do as the United African Movement is protest. Along those lines of defining ourselves, we have started the United African Movement Academy to train young people from age four uh, through high school on Afrocentricity, on self-definition. So as uh, you come to the Slave Theater, uh, you that do attend rallies, you get information. They meet twice a week. Uh, they are handled by uh, teachers who are already certified in the other world that we've certified in our world to help train our children. We've also said that we are calling on all of the churches to be uh, white ties Christmas and deal with Kwanzaa this year. If we catch Santa Claus in a black community, we're going to run him and the Rangers out of here this year because it is a criminal act on our children as much as we struggle that we give some fat white cat from some pole all the credit for what we do. And on New Year's Eve night, along those lines, rather than our people going to Times Square to drop a ball, we're going to be on Fulton Street to enter the 90s Afrocentric style with a ceremony. We have struggled through the 80s, we're going to the 90s, and we need to do it together.
compromise was whether to jump on your cases. I just wondered if you had to compromise any of your positions or issues for the Lincoln's campaign. No, uh, one other question, sorry. But Mr. Uh, okay, just answer that question. Well, let me say this, uh, in terms of the, the Lincoln's campaign, um, we have been moving toward a black mayor for many years. And there have been things that have been going on in our community for that period of time in order to rally us. I think that when you go back and you look at what brings about a black mayor, you have to look at other cities. And when you look at towns like Chicago, when you look at towns like Atlanta, you look at Philadelphia and other places, what you will find in many of those places is that there was a great rallying cry for many years. And there was a lot of struggle for many years. We got to the point uh, in, uh, in the Brawley case, I think it's very clear, and Mr. Dinkins uh, indicated this in his, uh, 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 in the City Sun last week, that he had already distanced himself from us, and that uh, he felt as though that we were wrong in the Brawley case, and that he didn't want to have anything to do with us. Uh, he also, prior to that, uh, denounced Minister Farrakhan, uh, who was a very dear friend of ours. Uh, we have been kinder in our response than Mr. Dickens has been in his attack, because we have not attacked him. We have not, we've had access to uh, TV, we've had access to radio, we've had access to newspapers. And in no instance have we gone on the attack. And so we are caught up in a situation between a Rudolph Giuliani, when he was a U.S. prosecutor, did everything he did, including convening a grand jury, to make sure that Reverend Sharpton and I went to jail. And as you know, uh, what we are faced with now, hopefully, is a Dave Dinkins who can realize that our time has come, that we fought cuts for 12 years, that we do not want a cut in blackface now. We're going to give Dave an opportunity, but we're not going to give Dave a honeymoon. All right? Nobody is going south on Dave. Wednesday morning, Dave is going to have to pay his dues to our community because we gave our votes to him. We're not going to play that game. All right? You know, he can say well, all he wanted to do to become mayor. He had to be cool. He had to be charming. He had to go out to other communities. Well, now you are mayor. All right? Now, this is the real deal. No more excuses. So we're not giving Dave Dinkins a honeymoon on Wednesday, nor should he ask for a honeymoon if he is for real, right. if he is for us, if, if he is for his people. Because the bottom line is, and this is something uh, that, that Professor Chandler said a few moments ago, is that we are a much larger voting block in New York than they are telling us. And Dave did not have to go to any other community to get elected. Right. All right, we got the votes right here in our own community. People play this coalition politics because they want to reward people in other communities. And they want to condition us so that when they begin to reward those people, we can say, well, we understand why. But there are some of us who can count. And there are some of us who keep statistics on how many folks that it takes to win a mayoral election. And we know that we have more than ample votes in our own community than Cox ever got in those 12 years. So we know that. So he's not fooling anybody. So he can use any tactic that he wants to become mayor, fine. But on Wednesday morning, you better jump out of that plane with your parachute. And when you hit the ground, you better start running. that when Harold Washington wanted to play the role of a nigger politician, he was not elected. Now one of the differences between New York and Chicago is that Chicago 
Pope did not allow a honeymoon before the election. New York, uh, the most striking thing about this election is that there are no issues related to black people on the agenda. And without any issues, who the hell are you voting for? Now, I understand the whole question of not compromising and solidarity, but that cannot be a honeymoon. It hasn't even been a marriage yet. He said that we did it. Brothers and sisters, uh, I'm a member of the uh, United African Movement, and I know our, one would say, our warrior, attorney, Alton Maddox, is very gracious. He would not tell you that we sent a letter inviting uh, David Dennings to come to our forum on Wednesday night, and he has not replied. So I think you need to know this. I need to ask a question to either uh, Reverend Sharpton or Attorney Maddox. Um, many of our brothers and sisters have come to these institutions and have gotten their education here. And I've been noticing for the last, let's say, five to ten years, the attitude is, I've got mine, you get right. yours, and they remain isolated from the community. Right. They never come back to give to the community. Right. What could you do to encourage them? Well, I think that uh, what we need to do is stop this epidemic of academic amnesia. <laughs> black people are not in colleges because they're smart. They were black people smart throughout history. A lot of us are in colleges because of movements that open the doors to these colleges. Yeah. And a lot of people that could never even read and write laid their bodies down so you could come here and study philosophy and study science and study mathematics. And you owe it to them to return those skills back to the community that bore you in the first place. When Jews send their children to school, they come back to the Jewish community and build it. Italians the same way. It goes on some of the Professor Phoenix was saying. We consider education our passport to getting out of the black community rather than our mandate to develop the black community. And I think that we I think that we should require those students that are going to school on the backs of their people and because of the blood that was shed for their people to come and put some time building black institutions and building our black community. Because coalitions do not build our community. I mean, as I said in my remarks, we've got political coalitions, but we don't have economic coalitions. We need to build our own economy. If you think you've got a coalition, you go out to the Jewish community and ask them, can you open up Shabazz Delicate Test? Uh -huh. Or go into the tag community and say, you want to open up Alton Maddox Linguini store. <laughs> and you see how much coalition you got. <laughs> We'll take two more questions and then we'll call it good evening. Good evening, Reverend Sharpman, Alton Maddox, and Mr. Phoenix, the young professor, president, chairman. Um, my question is, yes, we've been to this conference, we've listened, I've been to many meetings, conferences, conventions, alliances, organizations, but the, the question is, where do we go from here? As we enter the 90s, what do we do next? I come to these meetings and I sit down, and I don't see much action done when I just sit down and listen. I had a street rally to organize a community center in this community, and only 30 or 40 people showed up in the community. The question is, where do we go from here? We have seen all, why can't all these committees, the or grassroots organizing committee of the Black Political Convention, the Harriet Tub Tubman Fannie Lou Hamer Collective, the Malcolm X Forum, the United African Movement, the Afro-American Movement. Why can't they all join together in unity and get something done collectively for our people instead of having separate agendas and having separate things and getting things done for our people? Why can't they join together and get something done for our people as we enter the 90s, collectively with community and housing, collectively with education, collectively with black economics in our community, collectively with all these things. Why?
dichotomy between those of us who have developed skills and those of us who are willing to assist those who have skills. And one of the central problems that we have in our community is that most of us have received a training rather than an education. You see, uh, and that is a real serious problem in that we do not have the tools to develop our community. Colleges are not giving us those tools. And one of the things that I had to do after leaving law school was to reorient myself in order to develop a system where I could actually assist the black community. And just give you an example, uh, you know, very quickly, uh, when we were in the Howard Beach, uh, one of the things we did was we just simply said that we're not going to cooperate. Right. We're not going to cooperate with John Santucci. And I was speaking to a professor up at, up at Columbia University about a few months ago. And he said, you know, when you said that, I couldn't understand that. He said, because that was not a lawyer's response. Lawyers are not trained or educated to say that we're not going to cooperate. A lawyer would have said that we're going to sue those individuals who brought about Michael's death, or we're going to cooperate with the grand jury. And he said, well, why did you take that approach? And I said, I took a, an approach that has always worked in our community. You see, things that work for white people don't necessarily work for us. If that had been, Michael Griffith had been white, then suing somebody may have worked. But Michael was not white. So what I did was borrow something that has always worked in our community. Rosa Parks ignited a movement because she refused to cooperate. She refused to cooperate. The white man said, get up and let me sit down. Those are the rules. Rosa said, I'm not going to cooperate with that. The white man went into the Vietnam War and told Muhammad Ali, you're a great fighter. Come and fight for America. Hmm. Muhammad Ali said, no, I'm not going to cooperate with that. You see, so one of the greatest weapons that we have is that a non-cooperation. But no law school would have ever taught me that. That was something that I had to go beyond law schools to find. So one of the things that we have to do in college is to realize that while it may be important for us to be here, but that what we will learn in college will never allow us to have the tools to build our community. And that's one of the problems that you are facing in terms of why can't we get things going because we do meet. And we meet so often, but when we need, we still don't have the tools that we need to build our community because we have been trained by the white man and not educated by the black man. Great. That's right. We're going to have to uh, pull this to end uh, because we're going to have to do it. For those people who are interested in organizing, always remember, you know, um, one of our ancestors said, each one teach one. You know, we have to carry our own weight. We have to do it one at a time. It may be nice to think that you can go out and have a speech, all of a sudden everyone's going to organize. But if that was the case, we wouldn't be catching hell now. I'm going to ask everyone to join hands with everyone else so that we do end in solidarity. So before we leave here, let's all think to each other. I'm also going to ask Reverend Sharpton if he would either lead us in a moment of silence, a moment of prayer, a moment whenever he chooses to do. What? Let us all join hands in solidarity. Let's have a moment of silence for all of those that died in the Black Holocaust, 100 million in the Atlantic, as Dr. Chalice told us, and those that died in the continuing Holocaust, 
of our people here in the United States. Repeat after me. We are an African people. We are an African people. Robbed from our homeland. Robbed from our homeland. Robbed of our names. Robbed of our names. Our culture. Our culture. Our religion. Our religion. Our self-respect. Our self-respect. But we shall rise. We shall rise. Never to fall again. Never to fall again. Up your mighty race. Up your mighty race. You can accomplish. You can accomplish what you will. What you will. No justice. No justice. No peace. No peace. No justice. No justice. No peace. No peace. No peace. No justice. No justice. No peace. No peace. Happy solidarity. All right. can take about weeks because we got about okay. 20 people. All right, we can bring them down. So bring it up to um, the library. Up to the library. Um, I'll make sure I give them to you. From six to, I work from 6 to 8. 6 to 8? Work, yes. Okay, I'll give you some time. Right now, right? Uh, Come give me a name. I'm here some time. I'll put it back in. I'm, I'm keeping this. Put your coat on back. Okay. That is from 9 to 5. I'm here from 6 to. Okay, okay. Right. Any day. Right. What you think? You're a terrible. I hope I'm not on this video. You, 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 you are sure? No. 